So going back to the onion model of test taking, we went through a lot today and we over the past two days have gone through an approach to a question, how to go through a single block, how to go through multiple blocks. And we've created systems for that. The next thing that we're going to do though, and I think this is a unique way to go about it, is we're going to go through an approach for test day. And I'm gonna have Haley come in and join us for this portion of the webinar. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a Q&A as to what I do specifically for exam day. And that's gonna wrap us up. Everybody say hello to Haley. I first off just want to have all of you say a big thank you to Haley who you've gotten a lot of emails to from and a lot of communication. She has been absolutely stellar at helping us build this high guru community. So I really appreciate you guys uh, saying thank you to Haley. And personally, Haley, I want to say thank you as well. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Um, I'm so proud of everyone, especially you, Rahul. Um, it's been an amazing course so far. I've just been listening in and watching the participation. You guys are really great. That's wonderful. So let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about exam day. I know that there are some common questions we usually receive. And what are those common questions? Number one is how can you mentally prepare for exam day, especially in the days leading up to the exam? Yeah. So the days leading up to the exam, when I was going through it, I was so um, scared, anxious. I mean, there are a lot of different emotions. And one thing that I did was really kind of double down on that test taking psychology. And the test taking psychology that I wanted to share with everyone is related to visualization. Now, what is visualization? Well, visualization has been an important component to many different fields, ranging from sports to business. And essentially what you're going to be doing in the days leading up is either in the morning or in the evening, visualize every single portion of exam day. What you're going to do is you're going to engage your senses. I wake up, I'm going to be driving to the Prometric Center. This is how the mouse is going to feel when I'm going to be clicking the answer choices. And you want to also hold a mental picture of what you're going to be going through. And this is just a 10 minute exercise, but it really helps alleviate anxiety and primes your mind for success. You also want to imagine your ideal self. Remember, like we talked about yesterday, the whole aspect of changing your identity and saying, yes, I'm a good test taker. And so Muhammad Ali, you know what he used to do is he used to actually take visualization and combine it with affirmations. And I think that this is very relatable for us as we go into the final days of our USMLE um, exam. And so one power of visualization here is I, uh, Jack Nicholas, a famous golfer. I never hit a shot, not even in practice, without having a very sharp in-focus picture of it in my head. Visualize your success prior to test day. That's going to help relieve a lot of anxiety. Great. Amazing. Um, how early do you want to get to the exam center? So the exam in, uh, instructions say you should show up with your testing permit as well as uh, show up with all of your material about 30 minutes prior and make sure that you have all of your snacks and all of your um, uh, kind of materials prior to showing up for the uh, exam. Amazing. Um, what is the preparation like prior to checking in? Great. So one of the key features that I will tell you, especially as you are going to have your snacks and everything like that, is to go into the exam center and try to be one of the first people in the exam center. And first go and set up your locker. And what I like to say is set up your locker like a grocery store so that your breaks are going to be very, very efficient. You don't spend that time taking things in and out of your lunchbox. You have everything kind of lined up in your locker so that your snacks and your hydration and caffeine are ready to go. And then that facilitates a better check-in as well. And um, what is the, what makes that first block so stressful? 
Yeah. So, you know, you've checked in already and now you are going into that first block. And one of the things that we talked about is that preparation for the oh shit seven. And that oh shit seven is like, oh my gosh, like I'm taking the USF. This is actually happening. What's going on? Well, I think that visualizing that emotional response, that sympathomimetic release prior to hitting start is going to be very, very important. What I say in my mind is I say, all right, I'm going in That's first seven questions. I'm going to try to stem paraphrase and predict, but I know that it's going to be a little bit anxiety provoking. So I'm just going to prepare for myself to mentally lean in and start answering those questions with the strategies that we talked about. Amazing. Um, and how do you take breaks? So I'm glad that you asked that because many people try to plan out the breaks prior to the exam day. And I think that that is absolutely a wonderful strategy. And so the way that I take breaks is the following is, first off, I say that during the break, I am going to be using the restroom because, you know, I don't want to, in the middle of my block, have that urge or sensation. I want to hydrate and caffeinate, eat something, and then leave some time for checking in. So if this is going to be your seven uh, blocks, we talked a little bit about preparing your locker, making sure that everything is out and ready for you to go. You've come into the exam room early, uh, the exam center early. After the first block, I'm going to take five minutes. And again, doing the same thing that I started the whole discussion with. Second block, five minutes. After the third block, also five minutes. And then after the fourth block, I'm going to take a little bit of a longer break because I know that that's probably where I'm going to get a little bit tired. And then this is very important, guys, being over the hump and taking a longer break over the halfway mark. And that's where you may eat a little bit heavier of a meal. That's going to be really important. And then finally, after your sixth block, you can take that um, uh, your seven minute break and hey, Seventh block, guess what? You're done. So especially for step one, that's going to be important. And then step two CK, it's kind of the similar cadence towards the end because step two CK is eight blocks. You're going to be taking some longer breaks, but you want to account for a little bit of catch up time, especially during this uh, pandemic uh, season where you're going to have to wear your mask and uh, check in and there may be a long line, et cetera. So uh, just want to kind of put that on there to account for catch up time. Wow, that is um, some really great stress relieving information. Um, and before we open it up to the class Q&A, what are some really important take home points? I think in terms of take home points, be systematic in your strategy. I think on the days leading up to your exam, you want to have a finite amount of resources. And that's why I created that rapid review course is whatever you do, you want to say, I'm going to cover these five things on the two, three days before the exam. At the day before my exam, I'm going to shut things off at like 2 p.m., 4 p.m. Just relax, get into the good mindset, write my strategies, review the strategies here, and make sure that you're going to get enough rest and do your visualization exercises prior to stepping in the next day in your exam. That's fantastic. Um, thank you so much. I think that we can go ahead and open it up to the Q&A for you guys if you want to put those in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, so in the Q&A box, our first question is what materials we have to take? So I would make sure you have your ID. I printed out my test taking permit. I also made sure that I had my snacks, but that's pretty much it. They will provide everything else. The only other thing that I will say that's helpful is to have those styrofoam earplugs, the ones that, you know, if you're mowing the lawn or doing some law, uh, really um, uh, loud task, have those in there because I like to have to uh, use those and you can bring those into the exam room itself after they check them and put them in my ears so that I have a very quiet environment in my mind to think. Amazing. And what sort of uh, foods are allowed in snack wise? There are no foods or drinks allowed in the Prometric testing center, the specific area where your computer is, no food or drink. Um, what would you advise doing the 120 cues on Prometric? So I would say doing the 120 uh, questions at Prometric, if you're able to 
do that as a practice run through at the Prometric site. Again, it's the free 120. It's about $70. You have to plan a little bit of a ahead and there may be limited availability due to the pandemic. But I did that for my step one and step two CK that I went and did a practice run and just went to the exam to do the free 120. Will they provide a pen and paper to do calculations? Yes, they will. And remember that the calculator is embedded onto your computer. So you'll do a click calculator. Um, do you make notes on scratch paper as you do SPP for questions or just too time consuming um, or just on challenging questions? I usually only do stem paraphrase and predict for the um, uh, or in my mind. And I use the scratch paper only for numbers or calculation questions. See, when should we schedule the exam date? I would say schedule the exam date related to number one, when you can finish your UWorld question banks and uh, your uh, organ system review one or two times. And then also remember, it's going to be limited by the confines of your uh, medical school. They'll have a date to say, hey, you need to finish your exam by this date. And so I would say schedule it one week earlier or two weeks earlier so that then you're able to push it back if needed and still stay in the confines of what your school is staying. But that then solidifies the point that, hey, I need to start preparing earlier if my test is a little earlier. And I guess this is lastly, um, how many UWorld passes would you recommend getting through? Some people say two or three. That's a great uh, question. Um, and it kind of relates to what we talked about last uh, yesterday. You should get through UWorld at least once, then do your incorrects, reset UWorld, do it again, and then try to get through your incorrects one last time. I think that there's a lot of material in you world. And remember, in an explanation, your mind can only absorb one to three facts, and then you should just move on.